Maybe what I can do is I can try to explain what this looks like through an illustration. So I'm gonna walk over here to this illustration of, of water. And let's just say each one of these glasses represents bills we have to pay. And let's say that a pitcher of water is the income or the earnings that we receive. It may not be grain from the field or a fatted calf or whatever in our economy, it's, it's, it's money and this, our, this is our currency. Some of you get a paycheck, some of it goes directly into your account, but you know when you get that earning, every two weeks, every week, every couple months, whatever it is, you have bills, anybody got bills? And so what happens, let me, let me give you the wrong way and then let me give you the right way. The wrong way is I get my income and I say, ooh, gotta pay my taxes. And then I say, ooh, gotta pay my rent. Anybody got rent to pay? Anybody got a mortgage? Then you say, ooh, I got utilities. Yep. He said, oh, I got credit cards, MasterCard, Visa, American Express. I ain't got nothing against no credit cards, but cash is the best. Got, got a lot of those. Car payment, oh, Lord have mercy. And then, oh, yeah, I got to buy groceries, right? I got to get some food. So then you get your groceries, your food, you pay your bills, and look at this. I got some leftover. And the preacher said, I need to give to the Lord. So what do you do? You give whatever's left over. If you have anything left over, let's say this represents God. You give it, give it to God. There you go. And then you feel pretty good about it. You're like, wow, okay. But that is the wrong way according to the verses that we're reading. The verses that we're reading actually says it differently. The verses that we're reading it's saying we're not supposed to give to God from our leftovers. We're supposed to give to God from our what? From our first fruit. So here's the right way. I get my earnings, right? And I say the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give to God. So you give your first 10% of your earnings to God. And you say, well, pastor, 10% of my gross or 10% of my net? Anybody ever ask that question? Well, let me give you the answer. How do you want God to bless you, gross or net? All right, so you're going to give to God. I say 10% is where you start. Maybe you can't afford it. Whatever. Let's just not even worry about the percentage. Let's worry about the priority, God first. Okay? Then, Uncle Sam taxes, then my rent, mortgage, then my utilities, then my credit cards. And all of a sudden, after I've paid everything and everybody else, check it out. I got to, hang on, hang on. I got an empty glass. This is what I was afraid of. That if I give to God first, I may run out. But what you don't realize is that God has a different economy. Because what happens is you get a text and someone says, hey, you want to go to dinner tonight? You say, sure, I'll go to dinner tonight. And so even though you don't have food at the house, you get to go to dinner with some friends. And they said, it's going to be my treat. And then they order so much that there are leftovers, and they say, anybody want to take the leftovers home? And you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to be the first one to say yes, but yes. <laughs> so you get the package. You get to take the leftovers. You got dinner that night. You got leftovers for tomorrow. And then before everybody breaks, the people who treated says, you guys aren't going to believe this. Some friends invited us to go to Turks and Caicos on a vacation. We just bought all these groceries, but we're leaving this weekend. Do you know anybody 
that could take all the groceries out of our house because we're going to be gone for two weeks and it's going to spoil. And they look at you and say, would you have anything to do to use the groceries? Can you handle that? Can you come over and get the groceries? And you say, let me pray about it. Yes. And so now you get all these groceries and that, that's better groceries than you would have bought yourself. And so you walk into your cupboard, you walk into your kitchen, you open your refrigerator and you find out that God, because you gave to him first, God gave back to you in a creative way to the degree that not only did you have groceries, you had more groceries than you were going to get before. You have an overflow of groceries because that's what God does. God's economy is different than man's economy. And what God is saying is when you give of your first fruits, I will bless you in a way that you won't even be able to, to even think about. Because what you didn't know is that my cousin called me this week and said, Doc, he doesn't call me Doc, he calls me Cuz. Cuz, in my department, I got a bonus for the financial institution I work for but nobody else made their bonus. So my boss said to me, I'd like to give it to you privately, but instead of giving you a bonus, what I'm gonna do is I wanna give you a salary adjustment for the, for the bonus. He said, so you mean the bonus is $7,000? Yes. But you wanna give it to me as a salary adjustment? Yes. So that means every year I'm gonna have that $7,000? Yes. He didn't expect it, but what happens is when you give to God first, he begins to bless you with overflow in ways that you didn't even see it before. And all of a sudden you get a check in the mail that you weren't even expecting. There was a bill that was paid off that you weren't expecting. Credit cards were paid off that you weren't expecting. And what happens is God begins to take you from no flow to underflow to overflow. Because when you do what God says in God's way, the world may not understand it, but when God begins to pour his favor and his blessings over you, you receive the blessings of God from other people. And then when God begins to overflow in you, guess what you get to do? You now get to use your overflow to bless somebody else who needs it. You're the one saying, hey, let's go to dinner and let me treat. You're the one saying, I've got extra groceries. Let me bless you. God is saying, I want you to give from your first, not because I need it, but because of what it's going to do in you. I'm here to tell somebody that God has overflow in your future. God has said, you do what I've asked you to do. I'll take care of whatever your needs are when you put me first. God wants you to put him first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. You've got to make up your mind that I'm not going to jip God. I'll jip Visa before I jip God. Some of you have been making a God out of all your bills. And God is saying, listen, you make me God. You put me first and I will take care of those other things. But don't jip God. You hear people say, I got to rob Peter to pay Paul. That's fine with me. Don't rob God to pay Paul. That's not fine with me. You don't rob God. You give God what is his. Some of you have been jipping God. And God is here to say, stop it. Some of you have been skipping God altogether. And God is saying, stop it. Some of you have been tipping God. God, if you do a good job waiting on me, then I'll go to church. God, if you do a good job with my investments, then I'll give to you. God, if you help me win the lottery, then I'll become a philanthropist. God, perform for me, and then I'll tip you. God is saying, I don't want your tip. I don't need your tip. I don't serve you. You serve me. You're missing the blessing of overflow. God has overflow in some of your futures, but you got to sow to get your overflow. 